writing translations and reflections. Okay, we're going to first talk about what we learned yesterday in our investigation, and we're going to summarize that, and then we're going to talk about how we can write an equation that translates an, another given equation. So yesterday we looked at f of x in different forms. What happens when we take f of x... So we have f of x plus k. What happens when I take a function and I add a constant on the outside? What happened to it? Ooh, changes the y placement. placement, which is the vertical, vertical direction. direction. So it's a vertical change. And if it was plus k, it went up, right? Yeah. Okay. Went up and minus went down. What happens when I take a function and I subtract a number on the inside? It makes it go to the right. Makes it go to the right. And if I add a number on the inside, it goes to the left, right? It was opposite what we wanted, right? The opposite sign because it's minus h. So that's a horizontal change. Or transformation. Adding went left. Subtracting went right. The next thing we looked at is what happened when we multiplied by a negative on the outside. How did it change it? When we multiplied by a negative, it made it upside down, right? Now, if we take the whole function and multiply by a negative, it's going to actually reflect it in the x-axis. We haven't looked at this one yet, okay? What happens if I make it negative on the x on the inside? Reflection on the y-axis. Reflection on the y-axis. Let's look in the calculator <laughs> and see what happens and see if you guys are correct. I want you to write in your calculator, I want you to plug in the square root of x. What does that graph look like? Looks like this, right? Yeah. What's the name of the app again? Desmos is the app. It may not. It's not on every calculator or every iPad. <laughs> if you're correct in the prediction that if I multiply the x by a negative, it reflects it in the y-axis. The square root of negative x. It should look like this, right? Is that a reflection in the y-axis? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to do some examples. We're going to start with a simple example with a linear equation. Our initial function f of x is going to equal 4x minus 9. And this is what your homework's going to look like. Write a function g whose graph is, and then all these different things we're going to do. We're going to change the function. Here, I'll show you one of my favorite features of this. Oh, Our function crazy. is, wow. look, it makes a noise, too. Yeah, it's a lightsaber. <laughs> Our initial function, f, is 4x minus 9, and we're going to change it so that it translates 5 units up. Okay? Now, we said that to translate it up or down, we had to do what? Translate it up and down. Okay, so we need to add on the outside of the function to translate it up. So my function is 4x minus 9. 
to translate up 5, am I going to add or subtract 5? I'm going to add 5. And if I simplify that, my new function, g of x, g and f are just names of functions. f is the original, g is the translated function, okay? g of x equals what? 4x minus what? 4. How am I going to translate this equation, 4x minus 9, one unit to the right? The right was subtracting one, right? Yes. And we're going to subtract one inside the function. So that looks like this. 4 times x minus 1 minus 9. I subtracted 1 on the inside of my function. So instead of it just being x, it becomes x minus 1. Now I need to simplify. How do I simplify? Divide. Distribute wow. and combine like terms. What do you get? So we get oops, that g of x equals, that's a g, 4x minus 4 minus 9, 4x minus 13. And when we check that in the graphing calculator, it moved the graph one unit to the right. The thing about a linear equation is you can describe the transformations either vertically or horizontally, and you get the same graph. Okay, because we could have described 4x minus 13, as a vertical shift down four, right? Mm -hmm. But it also moved it to the left or to the right one. Now, a reflection in the x-axis multiplies the function by a negative one. Okay, so what happens when I multiply negative one times four x minus nine? Go ahead and distribute that. <coughs> okay, so that was negative 4x plus 9. And that reflected it over the x-axis, right? Mm -hmm. Now, reflection in the y-axis... We multiply the x by a negative. So I get 4 times negative 1 times x minus 9. That's what? Negative 4x minus 9. And when we look at the graph, we can see that it's reflected along the y-axis. Oh, what? <laughs> So our original function is now going to be the absolute value of x minus 5 minus 4. Put that in your graphing calculator, okay? It's an absolute value function, so it should look like what? What is the shape? It's a absolute value. It should be like a V, yeah. I don't know. Should it be skinny, wide, or the same as the parent function? Should it be skinny, wide, or the same? There's no number in front of the absolute value, right? So that makes it the same as the parent function. Okay. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to give it a try, and then we'll work through them together. So you're going to take each of these problems. Okay. I want you to take our original function, make it de move down to, write your equation, and then check it in the graphing calculator. Okay, then do the left three, then do reflection in X and reflection in Y. And use the calculator to help you figure out what you need to do. Let's go over it and see what we got, okay? Now, remember, if I wanted to move it up or down, I'm going to add to the outside of the function. So I have 
the absolute value, pencil, absolute value of x minus 5. Why is it doing that? Minus 4 minus 2. Which is, that looks terrible. The absolute value of x minus 5 <laughs> minus 6 is, if we think about where the vertex is, the vertex is at negative 4, negative 6 is down 2 from that, right? Okay, so is that what you got for 1? Now this one's a little trickier, move it left or right. Left is actually adding 3, right? On the inside of the function, that means on the inside of the absolute value. So I have... The absolute value of x plus 3 minus 5 minus 4. Because I add to the variable. Okay? So I'm going to add inside the function to the variable, and you get what? x minus 2. Absolute value of x minus 2 minus 4. Did that move it to the right or to the left 3? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, reflection in the x-axis, a lot of you just multiplied the function by a negative, but that only turned it upside down. The vertices were connecting, right? That's not really a reflection in the x-axis. I want to multiply the whole thing by a negative. And when I do that, to multiply a negative to the absolute value, I just put a negative out front but I multiply the negative by the negative 4, and that becomes plus 4. And then it did the true reflection, where my original function was down here like this. My reflection went like that. That's reflected. This is reflected in the x-axis, right? And lastly, how can I reflect it in the y-axis? I multiply the x by a negative. So I have the absolute value of negative x minus 5 minus 4. Now, you can put it in like this, but this is actually equivalent to factoring out a negative 1 and taking the absolute value of it. So what I want you to do in the graphing calculator, most of you probably have this, the negative x minus 5. Graph this, do you get the same thing? Graph plus 5. Is the graph of the absolute value of negative x minus 5 minus 4 the same as the absolute value of x plus 5 minus 4? Check it. Look on the cal graph and calculator. Okay, that moved up. Both of them are the same, right? So what your book shows as the work is taking out a negative one factor inside And then you can take the absolute value of the 1 because it's not being added or subtracted to anything. And that's why the absolute value of x plus 5 is the same as the absolute value of negative x minus 5. So we can, in an absolute value, reflecting in the y-axis, we can change the operation because that moves it to the other side, right? It moves it from a positive 5 to a negative 5. And that's a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, questions on that? That's x minus 5.